Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravel. coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And we had a fun day in Webster's courtroom. Poor Darren Patterson. <laughs> he is an, an excellent, competent attorney, and nobody listens to him. <laughs> He just sits there and dishes out good good legal advice that gets summarily ignored. I also want to thank um, 0093AF for sending me the awesome uh, uh, Judge Manning clip for pre-trial. I made a short of it, but I threw it, I threw it in here in the intro, too. Let's get this going, shall we? What are you in Cedric County for, sir? Go ahead. But uh, um, I did. I, I did. I, I am gonna say I didn't show up to court. I said I wanted out from my felony charges because um, um, I was going. To, I was on detoxing at the moment, so I was gonna get in a rehab. But um, at the time that I, I didn't went to the rehab because I had to show up for my for my court date for my misdemeanor, and um, on the way here I got in trouble with the. Hey, like, Mister, that's Mister, what I'm here oh, for, Mr. You know? Alvarez. I'd Judge. rather you not really talk about the things you got in trouble for for now. Okay. okay. Uh, um, can you just briefly state the charges you have pending, not not discuss them, but just what the charges you have pending on Sedgwick County are? Um, armed robbery and aggravated kidnapping. Very good. Thank you. So, armed Judge, I don't, robbery I don't, and kidnapping. Did I hear that right? Yes, yeah. Judge. Hey. Okay. Uh, I got a question who, for you. Who are you? Uh, Stowers. Okay. Oh, Mr. Stowers. You have a question for the court, for your uh, attorney? Oh, for my attorney. I'm sorry. Can I see him. Privately? Uh, yeah, just, just a second. Okay, so then if you can give them literally just a couple of seconds. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Aggravated assault, aggravated assault, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. You got three counts like assault or two? I just got two on here. Yeah. What, what bond do you have on the ag assaults? Well, it's a uh, hundred thousand. Fifty on each. Pre-trial. How about pre-trial? How about pre-trial? Oh, extraditable for what? What's the original charge or the underlying charge? Uh, possession of uh, identifying info. Okay, tell me what that was. This is just fun because she asked him to explain it, and he does what you do when you're talking to someone in a language they don't understand. He says it really slow and loud. It's, it's like something out of Dumb and Dumber. It's good stuff. It was in, in plain English. Possession of identifying information, items less than five. What's he talking about, Mr. Patterson? Well, it sounds like some kind of possible ID, but it's pending charges, of course. Sure. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, I just want you to know that you're hurting Jack's feelings. We are on the record in 2022 CR 362, State of Kansas versus Medwin Odell Bialez Alvarez. Please announce appearances. There we go on behalf of the state. Your Honor, Darren Patterson here on behalf of Medwin Velarez Alvarez, who does appear from the Cedric County Jail. Judge, this is a case where after discussing it with him and also reviewing my notes, it does appear that uh, he has a few other cases here in Butler County that um, we're wanting to try and work with Mr. Favre to work out a global plea bargain on these cases. But um, I, we're not quite there yet. We would ask the court not to be continued to the June 26th date. So that hopefully before then we'll have uh, the felonies worked out with the misdemeanor. Another case that's got some age to it, but he's been failing to appear a lot. So we can't have three times he's had failures to appear and, and now we have to have him in jail. Have you ever had a failure to appear? Possibly. So... Mr. Regeer, any objection to setting this over again? Um, none, none from the state, Your Honor. All right. What's what are you in Cedric County for, sir? Go ahead. But uh, um, I did, I, I did, I, I am gonna say I didn't show up to court. I said I wanted out from my felony charges because um, 
um, I was going, I was on detoxing at the moment, so I was going to get in a rehab, but um, at the time that I didn't went to the rehab because I had to show up for my, for my court date for my misdemeanor. And um, on the way here, I got in trouble with the. Hey, like, Mr. That's Mr. The I'm here Hello, for, Mr. Uh, Alvarez, I'd rather you not really talk about the things you got in trouble for for now. He's only slightly better than the guy who was smoking glue. Okay. okay. Uh, um, can you just briefly state the charges you have pending? Not not discuss them, but just what the charges you have pending on Cedric County are. Um. On robbery and aggravated kidnapping. Very good, thank you. So, On Judge, I don't, I don't. Robbery and kidnapping. Did I hear that right? Yes, yeah. Judge. I don't think he's going anywhere for a while. That's why I'm just asking for the 26th. Okay. And Mr. Regeer, what do you have him on? If you know in the other cases, the felonies, or maybe Mr. Patterson knows. The Butler Mr. County ones. Those are Mr. Favre's cases, Judge. I don't have oh, those in front of me. And you probably All don't right, know. It looks like um, besides uh, this case, there are at least two other um, Butler County cases. Um, looks like one is uh, theft, um, uh, felony theft more specifically, and the other one is um, possession of methamphetamine, possession of paraphernalia to distribute or manufacture, as well as possession of paraphernalia for use. Okay. So, Mr. Patterson, you want him continued to June, you said? Yes, Your Honor, please. Very well. This case is continued to the control docket June 26 at, do you want him here? Yeah, 9 a.m. probably. Thank you, Judge. You want him at 8? No, 9 a.m. is fine. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. We'll take that up again. So, if you're... Still at the jail, ask the jail if they'll let you come by Zoom. If you're out for some reason, then you'd be at the courthouse here in Butler County. Um, I have a, one more last question for your honor. Um, no, you may not. Please, I have to do anything with the, with the other cases, but uh, I don't have a whole, I don't ha I have a whole from the other cases for the other um, Butler case. We, I'm supposed hey, to have at 2.30. Alvarez, we discussed that. This, okay. the, the felony cases are not in front of this judge. Okay, okay. You'll have to take up those issues with the judge on those cases. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. If there's nothing further, you may go, Mr. Alvarez. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Is Ms. Holden? to see Holden, Your Honor. We are on the record in 2020, CR 315, State of Kansas versus J to C Rochelle Holden. Please announce appearances. Darren Regeer on behalf of the state. Regeer actually tries to Darren Patterson appearing on behalf of J to C Holden. Judge, this is a warrant to show cause. I, I don't see Miss Teal on here, but I would tell a court that uh, I have reviewed the warrant to show cause with Miss Holden. The allegation contained within that warrant to show cause is that she did fail to serve the second weekend of a previous court ordered two weekends. To that allegation, Your Honor, she does stipulate. Okay, so you you agree that you still owe $468 and that you didn't serve your second weekend, Ms. Holden, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is anyone making you enter the stipulation or agreement today? No, ma'am. You understand if I accept this, you could have your whole sentence ordered. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, I do find you in violation of your probation. I revoke your probation. Mr. Regeer, recommendations? And Judge, this is not one that Mr. Regeer and I have discussed. Would the court allow me to give my request, I guess, first? Please, go ahead. 
And Judge, I would tell the court that I have spoke to uh, um, my client, Miss um, Holden. She did not serve that second week. She would tell the court that uh, she um, had transportation problems. She doesn't drive herself, relies on others. So she did not serve it. She freely admits that, but uh, it has kind of caused her much more problems than um, not serving the one weekend. She has now been in the Butler County Jail on this case since February 1, 2023. So that weekend turned into a lot more time than just one weekend. She tells me that she was in Sedgwick County where she got arrested at on this warrant um, for a few days before she actually got to Butler, but I don't have those records. But Judge, we would ask the court to consider the time that she's been in there since February 1 as action for not um, serving that last weekend um, and ask the court to allow her to be placed back on probation to finish it. She does have a plan. Uh, D D Darren's doing a, a great job here. He really is. He's an excellent advocate, but <laughs> but Judge Webster is not having it. The expression says it all. When she gets out for employment and, and living locally, it sounds like, so that she can report as well as then get her case paid off. That would be the defense re request, Your Honor. Looks like on July 27th of 2020, she pled guilty and was sentenced to counts two and three. Those counts being theft of property or services and interference with law enforcement during the uh, issuance or attempted issuance of a warrant or execution, such as a search warrant, and battery on law enforcement officer was dismissed as part of the plea agreement. This is not her first warrant to show cause, because at the last warrant to show cause, she was ordered to serve the jail time we're talking about. Mr. Regeer, your recommendations? Uh, Your Honor, it would appear that counsel is requesting credit for time served and that probation be extended for a certain period of time. Um, say there's no objections, I might respectfully suggest 12 months would be appropriate um, in light of, of the uh, charges in this case. Rieger's gotten more sophisticated. That, that uh, you know, he's basically saying I can go along with uh, Mr. Patterson's r recommendation, but I want twelve months probation. Uh, he's he's uh, I get, It seems to me anyway that he's sort of maturing before our eyes here. That's a lot of no. She was first here July eighth, twenty twenty, three years ago, almost. Then July twenty seventh. Of course, it doesn't matter when the judge isn't buying it, <laughs> and I don't blame I don't blame Judge Webster. Every, everybody here is doing the right thing. That's when she entered her plea. She was supposed to be here September thirteenth, twenty twenty one. Probably a pay or appear. She failed to appear. She had first appearance March. Second, on the warrant to show cause, and the court modified her bond and set it for April 11th evidentiary hearing. April 11th, she waived her rights to hearing, was revoked to get with her con to get with her probation officer and serve those two weekends. That was April 11th, 2022, a year ago. And then she had September 23rd, 2022, failed to appear. September 28th, the bondsman got involved. 928, she failed to serve a sentence, had a hearing, it looks like. Can't tell if she was actually here. February 3rd, she had a failure to appear on a warrant to show cause. And Bondsman got involved March 7th. Didn't want the bond revoked. She had a warrant. She, she had a 
motion for judgment on bond and the Sedgwick County warrant. And why should, I don't know. I just feel like maybe she ought to just serve her whole sentence what's left of it. March 20th, she looks like she was, the, the, the motion for judgment on bond was set aside, so somebody got her here. Probably our bondsman. But as long as this has been going on, is it really going to do us any good to put her back on a year of probation, or will, will we just be doing another uh, more to show cause in a few months? And yep. She has six months underlying on one count, on count two, on count three, she has six months consecutive. So her controlling term is one year. She was supposed to get an anger management class. She was supposed to have no contact with victims. Mr. Regeer, your recommendation again? Uh, Your Honor. The um, state does not have an objection, at least at this point, that um, the defendant received credit for time served, um, as well as be placed back on probation, which I think would be, I, the state's position would be that it be extended for another 12 months. On the other hand, if the court does determine that would not be appropriate um, and that the defendant should serve the sentence, the state would respectfully suggest that um, costs and fees in this matter should be sent to collections. Mr. Patterson, your recommendation again? And Judge, she has told me that the 60 days have made an impact on her. That's why she's kind of worked on making a plan on what to do when she would re get out if the court would uh, reinstate probation, which includes that she's going to be employed and start, mm -hmm. and it sounds like live locally so that she can uh, um, not have a transportation issue with probation and make sure that she reports and gets this case over with. So again, we're asking the court to um, allow the time that she served, which would be in excess of 60 days for not serving the one weekend, which uh, it seems like that's been quite a bit of punishment for not serving that weekend, which is this, the allegation is before the court today. Um, so we just ask the court to allow her to um, have the sanction time and complete get this case. Judge, Judge Webster just gave the old oh, please expression too. It's just an allegation before the court. I mean, she wasn't there. Okay, she didn't serve it. Completed. Okay, but she she hasn't reported. She hasn't paid, and she well, hasn't not one of the violations, Judge. Yeah, but it's a fact. I I don't know that. We don't have Sharon Till here to say. Well, we know she's been sitting in the Sedgwick County Jail for 60 days. You told me that. So she couldn't have served it if she, or she couldn't have reported if she's been sitting in jail. Yes, Judge, for at least during this period, yes. And and the, the, the court's records show she still owes the 468, so she hasn't paid. And the jail, we all have agreed she didn't serve her, her weekend. So that's three that are obvious. Now, whether she's done the anger management, she sure hadn't provided proof if she hadn't reported. It's not her first revocation. It's her second. Why, why is she in Sedgwick County Jail right now? Judge, I was told she got picked up on this case there and had to stay there a few days before they got her transported. Okay. So you're sitting in jail strictly on this case. Is that right, uh, Ms. Holden? Yes, ma'am, but I'm in Butler County now. Okay. You don't have anything pending in Sedgwick County then? No, ma'am. The only thing you have right now is this one case? Yes, ma'am. So what was that going on in Sedgwick County? I had got picked up for you guys. Okay. They didn't have you in on anything ever? I had a hold for Butler County. Okay. And how much time have you... Uh, I find that unlikely. She, she got picked up for something, and then they found out she had a hold. I mean, it might have been like a traffic infraction or something, but that... I, I don't know. You guys tell me. You served? Um, the jail sheet here shows February 1, Judge, but that, of course, is only the time in Butler County. Where are you going to live when you get out? Uh, right across the street from the jail. 
with my stepmom. Perfect. That way they can come pick you up anytime they need to. In Butler County? Yes, ma'am. El Dorado? Yes, ma'am. What's your stepmom's name? Janine. Janine or Janine? Janine. What's her last name? Holden. Okay. And do you have a job lined up? Yes, ma'am. Where are you going to work? Um, it's for, it's for Louie Wade. She's a lo uh, local person here, but it's um, like home health personally though at her house. You're it's through all the in Central County though. You're going to be her home health aide? Yes, ma'am. Oh, great. And it's through what agency? All Saints. And refresh the court's memory, this interference with law enforcement, what happened there? Uh, I think it was at the fireworks stand, but somebody, I was in the back seat and they were pulling off and the cop was like standing by the car. I think that's what it was for. And you tried to drive off, is that right? No, I wasn't driving. Okay, well. But, but am I remembering that correctly? The officer was near the car and they started to drive off, possibly dragging him. Am I remembering that right? That yeah. was the case, Your Honor, yes. Okay. That the driver did drive away doing that, yes. And Your Honor, the affidavit in this matter does appear to refer to a four-minute vehicle pursuit involving um, um, multiple individuals, including the defendant. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, have um don't request 30 about 30 seconds all right uh your honor regrettably uh, my files are somewhat incomplete on that particular point if if i may um go off screen off like i can um, get with i can speak with my assistant and um get that get that in play that i can reference to if the court wishes well it looks like she has uh which case is this one i do, i can i can say that um this particular defendant does appear to have a um, a couple of um, closed cases in Butler County um, from 2020. Yeah, I see she has the 2020 TR 2729 driving while well suspended, no insurance, failure to wear a seat belt. Is that still open? Um, my understanding is that case is a closed case. Uh, it was dispo, probably part I, of this. I have agreement. those two, Judge, and they are closed. But part of the plea agreement part of her driving issues, I believe. Yeah, and then she has the 3013 registration, insurance, driving while suspended. I think those probably were disposed as part of the plea agreement in this case. And then there was the 172 city of Andover. All right, Ms. Holden, I just don't think you are taking this very seriously at all. Again, I'm revoking your probation. I'm going to modify your sentence to six months. You will serve the balance of that with credit for time served. And the 468 will go to collections. And that will be all, unless I'm overlooking something, Mr. Regeer. Um, nothing from the state, Your Honor. Mr. Patterson. There you are. All right. You are remanded to the custody of the sheriff, Ms. Holden. Remand. We are in recess on Holden. Judge, the last case in custody, I believe, is Trey Burns. We are on the record in 2023 CR 56, State of Kansas versus Trey Keenan Burns. Please announce appearances. Every year on behalf of the state. Governor Darren Patterson appear on behalf of Trey Burns, who does appear from the Butler County Jail. Judge, this is a case where after talking with Mr. Burns, I do need some additional time to get some additional information. Um, because he's in jail, though, um, I would ask the court to consider an alternative date to the June that you've been using. Uh, I would respectfully request May 8, uh, 2023. Well, what's been happening since February 3rd to move the case? 
Um, judge, I just haven't uh, got the things I needed. Is what all I can tell the court. But I don't. Again, I, I hate to continue it out to June, so I'm just asking for a 30 day continuance. Possession of hallucinogenic drug that doesn't sound like marijuana, does it? Is that what the, what he's charged with? I believe so, Your Honor. Um, Not either. Okay. That's it. Well, that possession of marijuana and paraphernalia, Judge. Yeah, that's, I see that. Yeah. And, and that's what my information is showing, Your Honor. All right. So you want it set for when? May what? May 8, Your Honor. How many do we have on that date, Savannah? Um, we're sitting at 30 right now, so we can do that. All right. Let's move that. You want him at 8 or 9? Just whenever the jail has him, Judge. So 9 o'clock is fine, or 8, 8 o'clock, I guess, is what the jail is using. Okay, 8 o'clock. And are you in jail, Mr. Burns, only on this case? Yes, Your Honor, for Kansas. And you, for Kansas, do you have another state? I have an extraditable hold out of Texas. Do they have a hold on you? Yes, ma'am. And what is it? Has to throw the for Kansas in there. Just has to. Is it? Uh, extraditable hold. For a pending case from 2017 that's never been dealt with. Okay, but I didn't hear the name of it. I thought I heard alcohol. No, you didn't hear alcohol, ma'am. What'd you say? What's, extraditable. What is, oh, extraditable. For what? What's the original charge or the underlying charge? Uh, possession of uh, identifying info. Okay, tell me what that was in in plain English. Possession of identifying information, <laughs> items less than five. What's he talking about? Uh, that's the second time that clips run during this stream, and it still gets me. <laughs> it's funny, and it's kind of sounding. I love it. It sounds like some kind of possible ID, but it's pending charges, of course. I mean, sure. Is that what you're talking about? Is some kind of false identification charge? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Out of Texas. Okay. Well, Texas has different language, and I, I and and that's not used against you, as Mr. Patterson said. That's pending and hasn't been prosecuted. But uh, if I reduce his bond, I will set this over to May 8th at 8 a.m. But if I modify his bond, is Texas going to want to come and get him and take him away? I don't want to lose him. Yeah, judge, lose judge, yeah judge, we don't we're not asking for bond modification. No, Your Honor. I have to I thought I heard that. I have to start getting things in Kansas before to <laughs> do anything anyways. That's what I would All right. I misunderstood. Okay, so this is set over to May 8th at 8 a.m. Anything further, Mr. Regier? Uh, nothing from the state, Your Honor. All right. Sorry about that, Mr. Patterson. All right. We'll be in recess. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Remember, you look marvelous. Jeremy Brown, start your video. We are on the record in your three cases. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Th this guy takes the cake. You're late. Where have you been? Jeremy Brown, start your video. I'm already irritated that you just now showed up, and now you can't start your video? <laughs> Can you hear me? Where have you been? Uh, my internet wouldn't work, so I had to call for a ride. I don't have a license and go to a friend's house down the road that has internet. Uh, I have a I have Q's link and it wouldn't let me sign in. I don't have a license or I'd have been at the place. Ma'am, you didn't say the cat jumped on his wiener, did you? Uh, okay. Well, we have we have Jared Regier for the state, and you're here with your attorney, Mr. Patterson, on three cases. Have you talked to Mr. Patterson? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Last time we were here, February 6th, I had to continue these cases because you needed time to talk to your attorney because you hadn't done it when I told you to on November 30th. Yes. So where are we today, Mr. Brown? Did you get over to Mr. Patterson and talk to him? When, uh, I was supposed to be in his office. We were having my little baby girl, uh, London. 
I named her London. Um, and so I called his secretary. She set up a time for me to call him uh, over the phone. And I, and I talked to him over the phone. And then uh, he said he'd get back to me. And I don't know if I tried calling the office one more time, but he had to look into a few things before. Uh, and he said he'd set up another time or something. But I did call and I did talk to Darren Patterson for like 30 minutes. But we we're in Wichita having a baby when I did call him. I went well, down. having a baby takes one day, maybe two at the most, depending on how long the labor is. And uh, we've had a couple. Of- yeah, yeah, and you don't do a lot with respect to that. <laughs> Months since you were told to get a hold of him. The day that I was supposed to get a hold of him, we were having her. So I went down in the parking lot and called his secretary, and she set up a time for me and him to talk. So I called him. Uh, and then I've been in jail for the last 14 days before that, and now I'm out on GPS. Um, I've only been out a few days. Judge, I guess at this point, the announcement would be to set these cases all for a jury trial. Violation of protection order, violation of protection order, violation of protection order. Was the woman having the baby, the mother, or the victim in these cases, the alleged victim? I, I don't know, Judge, but I'd rather my client not him. I know, but I'd rather my client not uh, speak up and, and say anything that might incriminate him as behalf of his attorney. Then in the 451 case. Violation of a protection order. And in the third case, that's one, two, three. And the third case, three, five, five, zero. Driving while habitual violator. Operating a vehicle without a tag. Oh. oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Patterson. Somehow I froze up right in the middle of it. Okay. Stephen, hold on. We're doing another court hearing. Okay. <laughs> He's got clients running their mouth, and it's, it's not even their case. <laughs> Darren is trying so hard, and he's doing good work, but you'll see. As usual, it gets worse. He said since November 14th, when he was first told to talk to you, no contact with victim Lyndon Cooley. Lyndon Cooley, one letter difference of the baby, Lyndon Cooley. Makes me very suspicious, Mr. Patterson. Mr. Aguirre, recommendations? Uh, well, Your Honor, at least two of these cases are uh, Ms. Norris's cases. And the state is eager to see these uh, cases resolved. Um, the uh, 22TR3550, it would also appear that, um, that he hasn't, well, one of the charges is perhaps somewhat minor, being an unclassified non-person misdemeanor. There is a uh, drive while habitual violator charge that the defendant is currently facing, which is a class A. So um, the state does have con- considerable concerns about drawing this matter out even farther. However, if the court does determine that a continuance is appropriate, um, I'm assuming it will be a continuing order, uh, continuing order of the court that the defendant shall have no contact with the victims, at least insofar as the violation of protective order cases are concerned. All right, uh, pre-trial is set by Zoom, June 12th. He's got to chime in. <laughs> 23 at 9 a.m. Jury trial is set June 14 and 15, live in person at the courthouse, 9 a.m. Judge, on the June 12th, can I request 8 a.m. for Mr. Brown? Yes. 8 a.m. on June 12th. You must be at the courthouse, sir. Uh, June, I'm going to make you be at the courthouse. June 12th, 8 a.m., sir. And Mr. Regeer, is there anything you can do to find out if the mother of that baby is 
Lyndon Cooley, because something tells me they're having contact when they're not supposed to be. Mr. Brown, hold on. Well, I want to say just said he was at no, the hospital. Mr. Brown, a baby named London, and the, the victim in this case is Lyndon. So either he's got a very understanding mother who lets him name London after an old girlfriend, or he's back with the mother again, even though he's not supposed to. Ma'am. Mr. Brown, your attorney is asking that you not know, say anything I further. Say something, please. I got out on GPS on my ankle because I'm not supposed to be around London, so it'll go off if I go around London. That was a stipulation from the judge. It's on my ankle. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought London was your baby. I'm saying that you're saying I have a no contact with London. My wife's never put no contact on me, but in order for me to get out of jail from the 14 okay. days, I guess. Is got... Lyndon your wife? Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to say I have a GPS. Okay, I'm talking about Lyndon. The, the court, the bond condition is not to have contact with the alleged victim in two of your cases. The alleged victim is Lyndon. I, I'm saying, ma'am, the only way I could get out of jail and go back to work to take care of my family was that I had to have a GPS that if I'm around London at all, that GPS goes off, I go to jail. But I got you it said you were in the hospital having a baby with Lyndon. Or so you implied it was with Lyndon. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I just went to jail. Uh, my wife's never got a PFA. I've it's never been served a PFA, and Judge Ricky dropped the contact, the uh, oh, endorsement. Yes. Sir, I'm not talking about a PFA. I'm talking about a Oh, Dragon Judge, Judge Ricky into this doesn't help at all. It doesn't help at all. Condition of a bone. <laughs> That's why I got the GPS on my ankle. I can't be around my wife or my baby until you guys uh, lift it. My baby, my wife, I can't see either one of them. I had to get out on GPS to go back to work to be able to at least take care of them. Did Judge my Ricky tell you you could have contact with Lyndon? Yes, ma'am. I have a piece of paper that says uh peaceful and non-harassing contact he listed it back in uh november in the criminal case yes ma'am the aggravated uh battery the aggravated uh because she didn't have nothing to do with that i kicked two guys out of my house and i can bring that paper down to you uh it's in it's at the house i'll have my my mom take me over there and i can bring it down to you show you where he relaxed the contact well, let me look. It should be here in the file if he did. Now, you're not talking about a PFA, right? No, he, I never had a PFA. He's My wife would never do that. I never would do anything to my wife. But I have a, uh, it was a revoke or remodify bonds. So when they did that, he raised the bond from 10000 to 50000 And then he relaxed the contact where it said the uh, defendant is allowed to have unharassed and peaceful contact with London to Shell Coop. How did he get a hold of these cases? Do what, ma'am? How did he get, how did you get in front of Judge Ricky on cases that were assigned to me? Judge, he has a different case with Judge Ricky. And that's where all the... Okay, that, that's so delicious. She, okay, so now Judge Webster's like, what the hell is Judge Ricky modifying my orders? There, you know, so then, so then, Darren Patterson has to step in to slow this train down and say, "No, Judge, he's got other cases. He's got additional criminal matters." <laughs> it's just a train wreck. Contact started with uh, Trump. Uh, uh, no contact with endorsed witnesses, and I have that paper that says I can have contact now. So, in other words, Judge Ricky relaxed restrictions on his case. But not mine. Did he specifically say my two cases? Or did he even know you had my two cases? I, I don't know, ma'am. I just know I've never had PFA. And and we she went up to the courthouse and asked him if she had a PFA or if, uh, no contact. They said, no, we can't. You can't fill out paperwork to so drop it because there's, you don't have one. That's the only reason I was around her. If my wife ever got PFA, I would not be around her. Your Honor, if, wife, if I may jump in. Go ahead. Um, I have just been in communication with Ms. Norris. Again, the uh, two criminal cases are her cases. Um, I, apparently, this is a defendant that has multiple no contact orders in place. And um, the uh, as far as the no contact orders in these cases are concerned, those have not been lifted. 
I'm not finding anything where he jumped in and, and modified them. I don't see where he's had any appearances in these two cases. I, I don't. I'm saying that where the no contact started was the aggravated battery and the aggravated robbery. Two, I kicked two guys out of my house. My wife was in the bedroom and Judge Crum said don't have no contact with endorsed witnesses. And after that, they started arresting me being around my wife for having contact. I didn't understand it because I knew she didn't have PFA. Well, now I'm out on ankle GPS. I can't even go around my baby, my wife, my house, nothing. Or this thing will go off and I go back to jail. I can't work to support them. Who put that uh -huh. monitor on you? Uh, Butler County EMS. Which judge? Um, uh, uh, Crum, because I went in, it was condition of bond if I wanted to get out. So Crum put it on there. I haven't had my first appearance yet. And it's it's right here. I haven't violated it. You haven't. Uh, you, you know, the other the other thing that people don't realize is, you know, it's Judge Crum and Judge Ricky. You, you know, they know each other. Like at some point, this call will end, and, and Judge Webster will be like, "Hey, I had somebody in front of me today. Do you know anything about this?" I mean, it's not like they won't figure it out. In in addition to the computer, another case that you haven't had a first appearance on. Yes, ma'am, because my wife went to the courthouse and they said there's no PFA, there's no nothing. But Judge Hart, I went to court. No, I did go to court. I'm sorry, ma'am. I went to court with Judge Hart. And he he said it's not a PFA, it's a no contact, do not have contact. And EMS people said that if I even go close to her, I go to jail. So I'm just I'm just working, waiting and trying to get this involved. I miss my baby. She's a little over a month old. And I'm just doing told me to do <laughs> see this is what i'm telling you too i'm you but you violated uh your violent you have violated your bond in both the cases before me because the bond is to have no contact with the alleged victim or endorsed witnesses and you did it now maybe judge ricky lifted the bond condition in his case but he probably didn't even know about these two cases that I've made the no contact. Okay, but M Mr. Brown, did you notice how this was going a little better when um, Darren Patterson was speaking for you? <laughs> There's a reason for that. Uh, okay, but I'm out on GPS and I'm doing. I'm going to court. I'm going to work. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I miss my baby. I miss my wife, and I don't know what else to do. I'm staying away from her, like you guys asked. I'm on GPS like a dog. I just am doing exactly what you guys said, and I don't. My wife wants contact with me. I want contact with her. We've had to put our uh, marriage day out for the last almost year now. We've got two babies together. We okay, so, so you're not married. It's not your wife. I mean, it, it, small technical issue at this point, but okay. We haven't had no incidents or fighting or anything like that. We didn't fight then. We just was arguing, and they took us to jail. All right. So your jury trial and pretrial are set. Thank you, ma'am. Do not have any more contact with your wife. Okay. May I ask you how to get this thing lifted? Because I miss my baby. She's, I can't even have pictures of her. I can't even see her. Okay. So he's got an attorney he doesn't listen to. Like, Darren Patterson's losing his freaking mind. <laughs> He's got an attorney he doesn't listen to that she appointed to him for free. And now and now he's like, ah, I'm not going to listen to him. Can I get some free advice from you, Judge? Oh, yeah, sure. I got to hold her once, and then I had to leave to go back to work. And then I haven't even been able to see her yet. She's a month old. <laughs> All right. Well, quit, having, quit having new cases, for one thing. You've got... Three with me, you've got one with Judge Crum, you've got one with Judge... Stop breaking the law. Mm -hmm. Judge Ricky, and, and they're all pretty violent natures, except for the habitual violator, and it takes quite a bit of uh, violations to get a habitual violator on your license. So it sounds like maybe you're doing the right thing finally, staying away from the people you're told to stay away, go to work, and go home. Sir, Mr. Brown, you have your hand up? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm able to get my license back 
uh, the first of next month, which okay. is almost Do it. three weeks. Okay, I was just like, you know, I will have that back. It's been since 2016 since I had a license. And I did not know kicking two guys out of my house was going to get me kicked out of my house and away from my family. All right. And Mr. Brown, I'm going to tell you again, next court date, appear at the courthouse. Uh, yes, ma'am. Because you are like three hours and something late today. Don't, don't worry. We, we have more. Dar Darren Patterson weighs in here. It's good stuff. Yes, ma'am. Because you said you were having troubles with your device. All right. Anything else, Mr. Regeer, that we need to address? I do not believe so, Your Honor. I believe no. the court has already uh, addressed the continuing no contact orders um, quite um, um, thoroughly. Okay. When was your baby born, Mr. Brown? Um, the 26th. Sorry, I'm upset. Of what month? March? Yes. He doesn't know the date, and it was like, you know, 10 days ago. <laughs> oh, I have serious uh, doubts as to whether or not that's his child, too. But, yeah, you know, what do I know? Yeah, you know, I, 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 if it mattered to me, I, I would want to test. 25th. I can't think right now, ma'am. I got a baby. That's okay. That's okay. You're all right. 25th. I want to say the 26 because I'm like a horrible parent. Judge. Yes, sir. I guess I want to find out if the court is going to allow me to withdraw. It doesn't appear Mr. Brown wants an attorney. He's not following any advice that I provide. Sorry, I just wanted to understand. Well, the attorney is assigned for your protection and benefit, Mr. Brown. And he did try to protect you from making incriminating statements. And even now, you're still raising your hand wanting to say more. Because you were asking. You're the judge. I wanted to tell you. <laughs> well, Mr. Patterson knows what to answer and how to answer. Mr. Patterson, no, I'm not going to allow you to withdraw. I understand your request, but I'm not going to. He knew damn well she wasn't going to allow him to withdraw. He, it was his way of communicating with his client. You've done enough damage. Now, please shut up. It's the only option he had available to him. It's it's kind of sweet. She picked up the clue and and sort of admonished him to, to try to bring this thing to a conclusion. <laughs> There's a lot of respect between them. It's cute. I'm going to do it. Sorry, Patterson. Judge, I would just ask we maintain the pretrial and jury trial date. I will send an appointment up with Mr. Brown to get prepared for those hearings. Very well. That will be the order. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Mr. Brown, you may go. Thank you. Have a good You're day. You're welcome. Sorry, Darren. You're welcome. I have one simple request. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Well, there you go. It's Darren Patterson's very bad, terrible, awful, no good day. <laughs> I, I never found out what Stephen was up to. I, I'm sure it's on there. The, the call's out there still. It, it was recent. It was like today. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't see, I didn't see the Steven uh, thing. He he was just standing there in his Hawaiian shirt, contemplating taking his clothes off the entire time with a dog. <laughs> That's probably a wackadoodle performance. I, I probably I probably should hunt that down and see. Who knows? Who knows? It was just too good. I didn't I didn't mean to get into this one today, but uh, I, poor Darren Patterson. It, it, <laughs> He just waits as, as his client just goes down. I mean, he told him everything. He gave good advice, everything he could do. The guy, the guy would not listen. He has to go and run his mouth and, and complicate everything and make it 10 times worse. We're getting it. <laughs> Once we start telling the story, we've got all the charges that, you know, he knows every judge in Kansas. <laughs>
<laughs> it starts with the judge saying, wait, 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 why is, why is Ricky modifying my order? She didn't say it, but she's kind of thinking that. Uh, I can't even tell by the way she she did it. She's like, I, I'm not sure about this. This doesn't sound like something you do, you, you know? <laughs> of course, he didn't. He didn't. He modified the order in his case because he, he has multiple criminal cases. Well, that's that's just uh, reminding the judge that you've you've got a bunch of stuff pending and and don't give him any breaks whatsoever. All that in an attempt to to get um, modifications to his bond conditions. Oh, good lord! Again, uh, Darren Patterson is well aware of what modifications are available or not. What what Judge Webster can be talked into or not. <laughs> he had already uh, reviewed that scenario and said, she, she, "This today is not the day." For, for trying to uh, change the uh, modify the bond so that so that you can uh, see your wife or I mean I mean again even the wrong term the the woman you refer to as your wife oh good lord there you have it thank you all for coming out I appreciate it I'll see y'all soon.